Will Clark, Clark Sale. I'm here with my dad, Steve Clark. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I've got C class on the brain. What did you say where you were? <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, so I've got C class on the brain right now, um, as I know you always do, and um, I gotta say I can't help thinking I've been. Thinking back, I mean, I, I remember, and I know you do as well, I look back 10 years ago when the class, for all intents and purposes, was basically extinct. And now we're looking at an event of possibly 16 votes in Falmouth in September. And I, I just, I gotta ask, you know, it's, I mean, how did we get from there to here? What happened? I mean, I, I know you made some changes to the racing format that you think have had an effect, but I mean, what... What happened? Well, I have kind of an affinity for lost causes. Um, the uh, C-Class probably was dead when I started building Kogato. Um, no one had challenged the Australians in five years. And uh, I was perfectly aware that we might be building the last boat when I undertook that project. Um, but it was something I wanted to do all my life, so it seemed like a useful thing to do. Um, the uh, the uh, format of the regatta was uh, of, of the uh, International Catamaran Challenge Trophy uh, was one that was patterned after the America's Cup, where um, the event really is driven by challengers challenging a defender. Um, and that sounds great, but that gives the defender who has the largest interest in seeing the class or the activity move forward very little ability to promote activity or to um, to uh, push the boat or to you know to foster um, uh, activity in the class. Further, the constructed in comp in country rules, which said the boat had to be designed and built um, in the country of challenge, meant that the defender couldn't do something like sell a boat or give a boat or you know um, do something to get. Um, another Buy a nation, learner boat to, like. to, 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 to help another nation get started mm -hmm. um, because those boats wouldn't be available uh, for competition in the trophy. Um, so as we transitioned away from the International Catamaran Challenge Trophy to the International Sea Class Championship, um, we, re, we relaxed those rules so that um, you know, in, in the last event, the Australians could sail a Canadian boat. Um, a Canadian boat could be sold to a French team, and the French team could use that boat in the championship. So it just is a far more inclusive and developmental model that uh, has, um, you know, that, that has the inventory of C-class catamarans, such as it is, able to be far more useful for people um, to develop new projects. Mm-hmm. You've also made some changes to the event, the, the racing itself, though, as well. Well, um, a match race, um, you know, a best of seven match race, uh, very, can be over very quickly. It can be over in four days. Um, and uh, so you have, um, you know, in the case of going to Australia, we went to Australia for two months. Uh, we sailed, or three months, we sailed, uh, you know, five days a week for for uh, you know, for six weeks, and then uh, it, we were done um, in four relatively short races, um, and that seems out of whack. I mean, that if you're going to go to all the trouble of sending your stuff around the world and everything else, you'd like it to be more like a week of sailing um, and be more of an adventure. Um, and so, I mean, that we just installed a fleet race component to the championship the defender doesn't qualify automatically to the finals so that there's a chance for people to sail their boats a whole lot more so instead of four races to get through the week um it's now more like uh, 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. so just more racing so yeah. basically the whole goal of the rules was one to relax the restrictions on teams getting involved and then the other goal was to make the events more rewarding yeah, and, and finally, the you know the only reason why we do this stuff is is well, I mean, a, a major reason why we do this stuff is sort of the prestige and the fun that it's associated with it. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the uh, you know having a more boat centered and more sailing it makes it more fun. Um, it just is a better economy that way. Um, from the uh, prestige standpoint, um, one thing that's happened is that the um, America's Cup has become wildly too expensive for anyone to consider at this cycle. Um, and the Volvo Ocean Race has become a one design event. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the Ormus 60s have turned into MOD 70s and the TP52s have uh, lost their mojo somehow. So um, basically the design teams um, out there have sort of run out of things to do. And they're looking for new projects. And they're looking for new projects. And new ways to be creative. And the, uh, the decision by the America's Cup people to put the, that, those, that event into a wing-masted catamaran, which is something we, we developed. Um, for uh, almost 50 years. Well, we've been doing it for a long time. Um, and uh, they, that means that if you're an aspiring young uh, yacht designer, expertise in wing sails, expertise in catamaran design is something that uh, looks good on your resume. or has a lot of value it, involved it. It means that you're more likely to get hired by one of these high profile design teams should there ever be an, enough teams to, I mean, one of the problems with the current America's Cup is that the, the total number of designers on these three design teams is well down from what it was when they were uh, when there were 17 challengers and they were, you know, all had their own design teams. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the employment, you know, again, it helps us um, because it means that um, people are trying to get to develop their expertise in this or demonstrate expertise in this. So it's been, it's been good. So with all the growth, uh, now I do need to get back to, uh, to what we did uh, this past weekend. And so with all the growth, um, when the class was very inactive, you were basically acting as supreme dictator for life. But now, with all the growth in the class and all the renewed interest, you felt the need to uh, to bring some democracy back into it. So is that the the uh, the main impetus behind holding this uh, summit we had this past well, weekend? Well, I'm, I'm as, as you know, I'm perfectly comfortable being a dictator. <laughs> um, autocracy is a is a fine form of government. Um, and I, I style myself after Terry Pratchett's Lord Vetinari. Um, I, I feel that there's, there's, there are good things that autocracy can, can, can do. Um, but um, when you have uh, a number of people playing for, you know, and, and this, is a, this, is a, uh, this is a recreational activity, um, they should have uh, a strong amount, you know, just philosophically, they should have a great deal of saying what they're in what the uh, what the activity looks like, um, so it just seems like a democratic ideal is 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 worth pursuing, and um, I don't think that the autocrat should be the one making the decision about what the democracy looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, what the uh, goal was, as we were um, breathing down the neck of success, perhaps um, we should we should convene a meeting and say, okay, we're likely to. It's just possible we're going to be successful here. Um, maybe we should consider how we want that success to play. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really the motivation of it. And uh, just uh, the, you know, the, the, more, uh, the more you think about these things and the more you get it in place ahead of time, the less uh, disruptive it is when, when it occurs. So we had a good meeting, um, uh, covered a lot of ground. Uh, we were able to uh, re, uh, reboot the class constitution and bylaws, um, enough to operate within the constitution and bylaws and initiate a discussion about how we should change them going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, uh, which is ideal. Um, and the people that are in charge of doing that are in fact the people that are doing it, the, uh, um, uh, are, are, are the people that are going to benefit from the growth. So um, it's, it's exciting times. Um, uh, we, uh, We've been dreaming about this for a while. Well, yeah, you've got to, you've got to, you know, um, you, you've got to grab the success or, or at least enjoy it. Or it'll grab you. Well, 
got to right um, grab by the bull by the tail and face the situation. I guess is the uh, um, and uh, I, I guess in terms of the building the numbers here, I, I would be remiss if I did not say that the um, one of the most significant players in getting this to actually happen has been Fred Eaton in Canada, who um, uh, you know bought the uh, bought Patient Lady Six and committed to. Uh, uh, you know, the C-Class and has built uh, a number of boats and been very strong and willing to loan things to other teams. He's willing been really to, willing instrumental to, in willing the growth to, Willing to develop uh, other players and everything else and not simply limit his vision to his own small agenda of being uh, successful in the class. And that, um, you, know, uh, you know, that has a, a huge, a huge impact. Um, and uh, you know, it's very, uh, you know, it's you, it's you never do these things by yourself. Um, and uh, I really have to recognize, you know, that, that he's done uh, you know, great work for us. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good talking to you, Dad. I'll check back with you later in the week, and we'll uh, we'll have a little talk about the the Kokuto project and where we're going to go from here. Fine. All right. You heard it here first, Steve Clark. I'm Will Clark of Clark Sale.